so Katie, I think it's time for some pretty pictures of Katie along with some space weather. So take it away, Katie. Thank you. So we're starting with some 3D images. So if you have your 3D glasses, you can put them on. If you don't, that's okay because we also have the non-3D versions. So here we have Ingenuity helicopter in flight. And if you have your glasses, here we go to the 3D version. And then this is a video of the flight of Ingenuity in 3D. You can see it on the bottom left there. I need to find my 3D glasses. I know I'm jealous. I'm hoping people will, will comment in the chat and tell us how cool this is, because I know that must look really cool. <laughs> and here we have the Western Rim and Ejecta crater on Mars. We'll go to the 3D. And here is the same crater, just zoomed in a little bit. And in 3D. And now on to some beautiful, pretty pictures. These are taken by telescope demonstrator Anthony Perkick. This is Cassiopeia on the upper left there, mm -hmm. and Galaxy Andromeda right in the middle. Beautiful image of the Milky Way and the telescope from Anthony Perkick. This is M20, the Trifid Nebula. And M8, the Lagoon Nebula. And this is beautiful Arcturus. And was that last one also by Anthony, by the way? Yeah, those were all Anthony Perkic images. I recognize the pattern in his- uh, I was thinking that. the same thought, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. And then here we have some beautiful sprites or transient luminous events. So sprites are large scale electric discharges that happen in high cumulonimbus clouds or thunderstorm clouds. And they occur at about 50 to 90 kilometers high and they shoot up toward space. And they usually occur by discharges of positive lightning between underlying thunderclouds and the ground. And they're difficult to capture via camera because of the weak light that's emitted from them. So here's another beautiful image of the sprites. This is over the Czech Republic. And these sprites were detected by ESA, the European Space Agency's swarm satellite, which measures and observes the Earth's magnetic field. So it's super rare to see sprites, and then it's even more rare to capture them from space, and that's what Swarm did, as well as being observed from the ground. So because of these observations, they can help scientists understand how sprites propagate into space. And here is the Swarm constellation over Earth, and Swarm can only measure sprites if the lightning is strong enough and the energy pro produced by transient luminous events, such as sprites could charge more than 800 electric vehicles where one single bolt of lightning could only charge 20. So they are very strong. Mm -hmm. Ending here with a beautiful image of sprites and the Perseids over the Czech Republic. And all of this is just to say that these findings with swarm observations and ground observations could improve scientific models of the ionized part of the Earth's atmosphere, which is also known as the ionosphere. Wow. Yeah. What are those dots? The dotted lines following the uh, celestial sphere? Yes, it looks like right. star trails. They they do. Oh, okay, maybe they're just a little pixelated on my uh, on my screen. Okay. I want to say that uh, sprites are very difficult to capture because they they last for a fraction of a second. So you really have yeah. to catch them at the right moment. Yeah, I've never seen them. Yeah. Same. So on to some space weather. This is an image of our sun from today, and you can see there are two sunspots 
currently on the sun, AR2829 in the lower left and 2827 in the upper right. And sunspots are also associated with coronal mass ejections, which help determine the aurora forecast for Earth. So here we have the sun on the left and the current coronal mass ejections from today on the right. So you can see it is pretty quiet for today. And this is from NOAA. So um, they make this aurora forecast from that information. And on the bottom left um, is the probability color. So you can see most of it is that bright green, which is a lower probability of seeing aurora today. But you can go to the NOAA um, website for uh, space weather and the aurora forecast um, daily to see these updates. Thank you, Katie. Fantastic. Very, very interesting. 